This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise here. The Descript. Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And what we do call the ETX Rock. Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. <laughs> ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket check. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. As long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! Howdy, folks, this is Aaron Watson. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Hey, guys, Boston Chris here with another episode of the ETX Rock Show. And we have a huge treat for you guys today. As you can see, we're on location. We're not on the, in the normal ETX Rock set. We're out at Love and War in, in Texas, the Lindale location. Um, our good buddy Ty Phelps is... Uh, giving us carte blanche out here to talk to somebody and uh, man we have a treat for you guys um, we're sitting here with the 2017 this is brand new the 2017 new duo group of the year yeah. um, in the state of texas through the texas regional radio music awards that's a lot to say a lot of syllables um but yeah man brand new this just happened like uh last weekend or the weekend before Two weekends ago? Something like that. Yeah. And uh, we were talking off camera about what, what your face looked like. And <laughs> <laughs> we can demonstrate. We're good at I'm that. I'm a sheer terror. I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, this this is a big deal. If you're watching from outside the state of Texas, um, the infrastructure is in place here in Texas where, the, you know, the artists here um, are getting airplay on Texas ra mm -hmm. uh, radio stations. And something, like a, something like 135 reporting stations. Right, and it should be more, by the way. Some of you other stations out there need to start reporting. But, Amen. Um, the it's more the merrier. Like but I think it's cool that here in the state of Texas we have that for artists that are, especially independent artists yeah. right. like there's, yourselves. There's really no other place besides Nashville that it comes right. out of in terms for country music. You know, um, Nashville kind of rules the scene on, right. the, on the, the charts thing, so it's kind of nice that Texas mm -hmm. has their own thing. It's just and, like, I, and I think uh, a lot of the artists here in Texas are, are kind of making a home here um, within that infrastructure and saying, hey, you know what, I don't need Nashville. I can do um, what I need to do here and have more freedom. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you know Nashville, Nashville has a lot of great points about it. Right. You know, it's, there's a whole lot of music, there's a whole lot of great musicians mm -hmm. there. The talent pool is very deep, but... If you want to be a working musician, unless you're a studio musician, you can't really truly live in Nashville unless you're on a label. If you're right. kind of an indie artist, that's really um, a hard place to be unless you already exactly. have a good following. And I think Texas has become the home of the indie artists, and a lot of the you know the neighboring states have a lot of artists that are making a home here as well, oh, yeah. like yeah. Bree Bagwell, and there's others that have yeah. come in as well. Yeah. Um, and you guys actually have a brand new single that was just released called mm -hmm. Pulling Weeds. Yeah. And uh, the first week on the charts, number 90 already. Yeah, it jumped up a bunch. We yeah, were, it was like 13 spots. Mm -hmm. Well, and more than that, um, because last yeah, week we were number 113. So. We were, and that's so kind of following yeah. under, under yeah. so yeah, we came, right. we came a minute up. It was kind 23. of like 23, yeah, 23 spots. Well, I mean, if you're, I mean, basically you debuted in the top 100. I mean, if, yeah. it's, if it's listed as the first week being yeah. spin yeah. and you're number 90 so I mean that it sounds like it's got a lot of traction yeah we were we we're in there with some really cool company too like we when we looked at who else got quite a bit of spins like right. Pat Green's in there mm -hmm. and I was like oh god Pat Green Ugh. yeah <laughs> how do you compete with Pat Green you know I mean, we you know, we're our own people, so we just, I feel like we're making our own little, our own our little, little niche. Absolutely, yeah. and we'll definitely get into that after. Yeah. Um, but you guys are actually going to play Pulling Weed, so tell us a little bit about the song and where it came from and, and all that. Both <laughs> of us. No pressure, no. They're a band of white men. <laughs> they are. Um, basically, it was just this idea. We had a, just, I had a terrible day, and I had a couple people in my life that needed to go. Mm-hmm. Permanently, and um, I was just sitting around, and I was like, you know, it's a very hippie thing to think, but just yeah, people like that, you just need to kind of pluck them out mm -hmm. like weeds in a the garden. They're gonna go, and and once they're gone, they need to stay gone, and things have been better. So it's just a bad day turned into a great song. Bad day. I sat down with a, a you know pencil and piece of paper, and was just like, oh, I gotta get it out, and uh, had this idea, and then came to Arwen, she helped me chart it and finish it up, and. And awesome. added one, one line is my favorite line of the whole song. Sometimes the money line it, it comes from a separate right. place. Yeah. yeah, and it's a Joe Dirt reference. Less <laughs> <laughs> she could take the girl out of Waxahachie. No. Yeah, I, I sat down and I wrote 
sat in the in the hotel room when we were writing it in Bernie, and I was like, we have to have this line in here. We have to have it somewhere. I was like, are you sure? And I was like, okay. yes. <laughs> we can sneak it in there. No one will ever really know what it says for a while, and then they'll catch it until someone interviews them, and then they talk yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah but I think it's I think it's a val it's, a, it's something that needs to be talked about. I really. <laughs> Joe Dirt. There's a problem. Thank you, Joe Dirt. <laughs> He's a classy man. So you guys check this out. This is live on the ETX Rock Show, the Calamity Janes, with their brand new single. Pulling weeds. This is important, so grab a pin. We are mobile audio and video production serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For $496 with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Production. We are back, and of course, we're going to talk uh, more with the Calamity Janes here about their music and maybe some stories and, and their influence and things like that. 
Um, but first, I really want to thank you guys for taking the time uh, to talk with us today. Thank you for having us. I mean, they're fixing to go on stage here in probably a couple hours. Yeah, and, oh, I don't know much on uh, and yeah, if you guys don't know about Love and War in Texas, the Lindale location, it's brand new out here. Um, we're talking anybody that's anybody has played on the stage, right? We're in the green room here, but I mean, we're talking Wade Bowen and Roger Craig and Charlie Robinson and all of them. I mean, everybody has played out here. Yeah. So, Co I mean, yes. Oh, man, Co is from East Texas. Yeah, Co. He's down in Stephenville now, so, but whatever. But he came from here. His his van, Janet, his first van van, we bought from him. So we Very had nice. his first van van and yeah. Janet. So what's it like to be out here at Love and War, knowing all of these amazing artists play here all the time? I mean, it's kind of one of those things, like there's a couple of stages that you play that you know it's like developing the reputation for being hallowed. You know? right. And there's some that are already hallowed. You know, mm -hmm. Green Hall is a hallowed yeah, absolutely. space. Absolutely, like, Billy Bob's. Uh, but yeah, Billy yeah. Bob's. Like who, you know, the main like, stage, House of Blues. So yeah. When we played that, I was like, how did we get here? Who right. did this? Yeah, it was, and what's it? Well, what's going through your mind when you're playing a place like that? I mean, especially for the first time, because I can imagine. Yeah, don't yeah, don't, don't mess it up. up. <laughs> yeah. Don't trip in your heels. Get invited yeah. back. Get invited back. But I mean, Love and War has kind of become our place here in East Texas for Texas country. We're super excited to have Ty and everybody out here. Yeah, and yeah. if you haven't heard about him yet, taking a show out here, you're going to see the best. In Texas country, always here in Lindale. And it's yeah. one of the coolest venues. It's such a big open Absolutely. space. Absolutely. You know? Great food, yeah. good yeah. service, Great food. amazing music. I'm so yeah. hungry. More his city is. What? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think margaritas are really good too. Yes. Ooh, I mean, I can't drink that. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to mess up a margarita. And it's hard for me to mess it up to a point that I won't drink it. <laughs> I think that's called being an alcoholic sugar. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't so we were talking about uh, pulling weeds and how it's, it's already kind of flying up the charts. And you talked about Pat Green. Yeah. Um, so I mean, when you, I'm sure, like me, you're checking that chart every Friday when it comes out. Yeah. So how does it feel, each of you, to see your name listed with the Pat Greens and the Aaron Watsons and the people like that? Aaron, I, for me, like I'm always excited to see who's around us. You know, like it. I, We've been working at this for five years. We've, this is our fifth radio single. It's our, you know, it's still just kind of weird to mm -hmm. look at the radio chart and just go, that's our name. Holy, holy shit. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I don't know if I can say that. Right. It's okay. I think for me, it's more of like, like, are they sure? Like, Thank you. Right? Like, they played our song that many times? But it's, it's, well, and it's, it's weird cool. too, like, go on, like, because I live in Waxahachie, and I'm, I'm not trying to, I love you both. I love you. I'm the more noticeable one of the group, and it's the hair and tattoos. Her whole so <laughs> when I go out, and even in Waxahachie, it's like we were on the front page of the Waxahachie paper, like right after the awards show, and like somebody was like, "Hey, you were in the paper. You're in that Jane group." And I'm like, <laughs> "But I'm like trying to do my grocery shopping with kids, so it's kind of like it's weird, mm -hmm. but in a good way. Right. It's like." Yeah. I was like, when Daryl Dodd was like, anytime you see me, you come come get on stage with me. I'm like, don't, don't say that. Don't, don't. Don't. I know, but I'm like, what? You, will, you will rue the day that you said that. What? Like, it just makes me feel like, is this right? Is this real life? Like, is this happening? <laughs> And for you guys that might be hearing about the Calamity Janes for the first time, they are sisters. Real life. And let me introduce y'all. This is Arwen. This She's is Alyssa. And this middle. is Courtney. And um, everybody, I mean, your fans already know who the middle sister is. <laughs> yeah, yep. That amazing song, the Middle Sister. We thought we had a song. Yeah. yeah, there's a song about it. Yeah. So when is Little Sister and Big Sister come out? Oh, I know, right. Oh, <laughs> her little juice be about her, her life with her kids. We've had our crazy having... a little bit better than she's just like. My, my crazy was a lot younger. I don't remember a lot of it because there was alcohol involved. Right. So, yeah. Actually, my crazy came out in Gypsy. Like, Gypsy was my crazy, angry... Yeah, vindictive, wrathful songs. The meanest thing I've ever said That's about anybody. That's probably my favorite song by y'all. Isn't it an amazing? Song? What I what I really love about you guys is, I mean, so many different songs, but each song is a different style. Yeah, there's so much influence involved. Like, I'm, I was I was telling Alyssa earlier, "Riverbed" reminds me of like a Texas swing song. Yeah, and then you get the Celtic vibes from from Gypsy. Yeah, so I mean. You guys must have crazy influences that are all over the place. Yes. I think a lot of it's because we are three totally separate, different people. Right. Like, I listen to something completely different than she does, and she listens to something I mean, we're 
We're three different people. So, so how do you get on the same page if that's the case? A lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff happens. Yeah. Some, there's a lot of writing like, influences. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, uh, we we sit down together a lot and write, but usually these two are the ones that write, do most of the writing. I mean, she's on you. <laughs> no, not really. But she's her lyrical brain is amazing, and her knowledge of how things is like how to how they fit. Structure, yes, yeah. the structure yeah. is great, and I'm just sitting there like. Just tell me when to say it. Yeah, I like, <laughs> oh, I, hear, I hear a high harmony here. Yeah. But just That's listening true. to these. But see, it probably know. wouldn't work without you, though, yeah. at the same time. Well, I don't think it would work without all three of us. Right, together. exactly. Doing this alone, we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. it I hope that, like, together were the perfect moments. Yeah. <laughs> so, off camera, I thought I was going to actually, you know, compare them to somebody that they'd never heard before, but... Because I know you guys get a lot of Dixie Chicks and, uh -huh. and stuff like that, yeah. Pistol Annie's, and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to go there. Because um, <laughs> I know, I figured everybody probably already did that. You know what, though, we love the comparison, just, you know, for people to say that we even halfway, you know, sound remotely close to these people who are so talented right. and yeah. such great musicians. Like, I'm cool with it. I'm right. always cool with it. But you know? see, the thing the thing is, and, and I'll tell you guys out there who, who they remind me of, is if you guys remember the movie Oh Brother Where Art Thou, the siren song. Um, I think it's called Didn't Know About yeah. the Baby or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, Little Baby. Yeah, something like that. But it's Emmy Lou Harris, Jillian Welch, and Alison Krauss. Yes. Probably the most amazing harmonies I've ever heard. Yes. And as a non-musician, but I've sung a little bit, I know how difficult harmonies are. Um, so <laughs> how... How do you guys make that happen? They get one million percent I don't of the know. credit. <laughs> they they really do get one million percent of the credit. I was talking to the Braun brothers backstage at the awards thing. We were talking about how, you know, having a sing alone is terrifying mm -hmm. when we're so used to having each other, mm -hmm. you know, to, to bounce stuff off of. But the harmony for us truly belongs not to me, but to them. Like without their voices, like the harmony's not a thing that I can do. I don't I have that. Good. I thought I turned it off. And I mean you guys all sing lead at certain mm -hmm. points yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, when we came into this, we weren't going to be like, okay, you're the lead singer, and you're the this, and then <laughs> I'm the this. This is how it's going to be, because it is a group effort. Right. Completely I think that change. keeps you all more versatile, too, right? Yeah, it really keeps does. the sound kind of changing, too. It does. Yeah, because well, you each have your own influences, you have your own personality, mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean, when you're singing lead, it's going to be a different vibe for your for your audience. Well, and yeah. she doesn't do the, she, she doesn't give herself enough for this either, that she is learning she harmony. Sings harmony. She, she's she sings learning in her there. ear. <laughs> she's training her ear. Like, I've always been a harmony singer. In mm -hmm. school, I sang in choral, and I was a harmony singer then. And so, uh, you know, she's learning, though. She's getting there. We're going to try her up for I'm a horrible harmony Stop. singer. Stop. No. Maybe not horrible. That's the word. I'm Sometimes the least. She's a little off. <laughs> Sometimes she's a little off, but she knows it, and she backs off. She knows it. That's coming from a redhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that because I'm engaged to a redhead, so hey. it's all good. Well, I know. Redheads, <laughs> redheads are the craziest. I'm the funnest. That's why I'm engaged to a redhead, because yeah. they're the craziest. They're the fun ones. You see what you're into. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so we were talking about influences. So, uh, I mean, tell us some of your the people you guys looked up to growing up, musically. Oh, man. We were, we were such a kind of a rock and roll family, and my mom listened to Crystal Gale. I remember listening to Crystal Gale at the lake. Oh, God, yes. And, <laughs> and the Monte Carlo. And the Monte Carlo. And Ooh. listening to, to old style, you know, uh, uh, was it Dan Seals? Baby's got her blue jeans on. And oh, that was Mel McDaniel. Dan, oh, Dan Seals was Bebop was, uh, or Bebop My Baby. Uh, Bop with My Baby. Yes, yeah. Bop with My Baby. <laughs> yeah. And, but then, you know, for me, my probably my biggest influences were guys like Walt Wilkins, Willie Nelson, and like those guys wow. who are storytellers and yeah. songwriters. Like, Walt, you can't beat Walt Wilkins. He's my, he's my spirit. Walt animal. is an amazing producer. He, he fangirls him so bad. I think he might have her show me that. Um, he does not. Yeah. I would probably do the same thing if I ever met Walt, to it's be honest. Walt and, I, and Lloyd Maines is another one. Yes, I love Lloyd Maines. He's super sweet. So, funny story. We played the Larry Joe Taylor Music Festival a couple of years ago. And we're up on stage kind of getting ready and stuff. And this guy walks up on the stage and he's like, hey, you mind if I set up my instrument here? And none of us realize who this is. Mm -hmm. And we're like, yeah, sure. And our lead player at the time is an old dude named Tanner, who's like still one of my very favorite people on the, on the planet. But he was like, yeah, man, go ahead. And they get to talking and stuff. And Tanner's from Lubbock and he's from Lubbock. And I think Tanner probably knows who he is. I don't know who he is really because I've never seen his face. I just heard his name. And Courtney walks over and she goes, that's Lloyd Maines. And I was like, oh, shh. But, well, but before that, she had been, me and I'm like, I don't know who that is. 
she's like Natalie Maine's dad. I'm like, they seriously like, oh. But before before that, we had been in a circle warming up, and we right. were just kind of singing and stuff. And he walked over and he complimented our harmony. I think it just didn't sink in my brain, or you know who it was. Mm-hmm. And then she said who it was. I don't know. I want little kiddos. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> like I'm an interviewer, so mm-hmm. I mean, Natalie Maines would be cool. Don't get me wrong. But if I ever was sitting across from Lloyd Maines, like that's my way of making it. It's You'd like, be like, yeah. well, and I yeah. wish I hadn't said anything because like. <laughs> When we played, I, I was like nervous, and I looked around, and then our lead player, he was, he was, you know, because Lord was right here, and Terry Hendricks was right they there. They sat like right here right. to us and watched yeah. us, and I was like, oh, no pressure, no pressure, you know? yeah, not at all. Sweating. And see, I mean, I'm a huge fan of just hearing how people create. So, oh yeah, you know, I mean, Lloyd Maines is just wow. Yeah. Walt Wilkins is the same thing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, they're, to me they're Texas treasures. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Robert Earl Keen, yeah. Ray oh, Wiley Hubbard. Yeah. Oh um, man! Yeah, I mean, and that's all here in Texas. They don't need Nashville. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I know for a fact that the Calamity Janes don't need Nashville, and I know you guys know that too, right? <laughs> well, you know, we're we're coming up on this summer tour. We were doing some math the other day, and it looks like we got something like eight states. Did what did I say? Eight states. Eight. Eight weeks, twenty cities. I heard that um, yeah. y'all's booking agent has bipolar. Is that true? She's so crazy. <laughs> 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 She's no. playing hopscotch with the United States map. Yeah, it's just like, let's throw a dart. See, okay, that's what we're going next. <laughs> so, if, if, I, I got to tell you guys, we're in Lindale, Texas. Today is the 15th of June. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow is the 16th of June. They're playing in Paris, Kentucky tomorrow. Yes. The 17th of June, they're playing in New York City. Uh-huh, and the 18th. Also, yeah. 17th. We two Bipolar, days. y'all. Two days. No, it was kind of a strange shot. Ish. Kind of. Sort of. Ish. 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 Yeah, right Did you get New York right. first or Kentucky? New we, York. We got New York first. So Kentucky is the connector. Yes. Yeah. And that's I was looking for. I was like, how do we get from here to there and make make a paycheck? <laughs> Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky right. was the paycheck. Yeah. Uh, well, it works. But we have a lot of fans in Kentucky. Actually, we have a really big show that's being planned. Our uh, godmother, pretty much, mm-hmm. she's, she moved up to Kentucky after her husband passed away, and so. We have free room and board while we're there. I mean, the place She's to take a shower. She's going to, I can't wait, please. So you guys got to be excited to just hit the road and see the country. Yes. Yes. Always. Have you guys been in New York City yet? I have. I have. I, have. I, I was just there in October. I just took a weekend and went and um, it was the five There are some places to play. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. And then. Um, well, I mean, I'm extremely proud of you to find country clubs in New York City to you play. You very surprised. In Harlem. We're playing in Harlem. I'm like, we're going to get jumped. That's amazing. <laughs> no. I, I cut my fingernails short. Y'all are going to have Harlem fans like by yes. next weekend. That is awesome. Well, and the other thing, there's another group, the Calamity Janes, in New York also. They're yes. Brooklyn. They're a oh, Brooklyn group. So it's, I'm it's like, maybe they can come and hang out with us, the Janes with Janes. It could be like Calamity Janes squared. Oh, Cute. Right. No, wait, no. There's squared. squared. No, it's it's squared. Cute. Wow. Wow, that's a I whole new different I don't level know. of math. Please don't. <laughs> I don't math. Please don't go there. My brain's going to... I only math, I only math well, it's, it's and too maths. early in the week for math, right? I think. It's I usually wait. that's like a Friday thing. Yeah. Because yeah. then the alcohol's involved. Usually. <laughs> I'm down. Alcohol's not involved yet. Just so you guys it. are, um, you guys are based in Waxahachie, is that right? All three of y'all? Yeah. Or just... She's, she will be moving there I in one month. The process of moving. We have so much going on. We're listing our house in Burleson and moving to Waxahachie. And mom's old house and mom bought a new house two blocks around the corner. This one's a block the other way, so we're all going to kill each other or get Yeah, lost. and you guys are on the road together and yeah. all that, so there may be yeah. two or one coming back. Yeah. The redhead <laughs> will survive. She's scrappy, oh, no. so I have my money's on her. It's <laughs> really not good. She broke my collarbone one time when we were younger. It's good. She wouldn't give me the keys to the car. It was in the middle of the day. Maybe she should listen. I was not <laughs> drinking. Actually, the only, the only punch in the face I've ever had has also come from my sister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She that was, means I love you in redhead. She was yes, young. absolutely does. She was That's the tagline of this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a punch and it means I love hey, you in redhead. You know what though? She needed it. <laughs> you needed it. Now you sing harmony. So I gotta tell you guys how I actually heard about the Calamity James. Um, oh. last year our episode fifty guest was Austin Lane. Oh, and, I love Austin. And we were talking about different artists that he played with, and he's like, Boston, you got to check out the Calamity James. And I was like, I'd heard of y'all, but I hadn't really listened. Yeah. And he pulled out his phone and showing us, you know, your songs. And I was like, okay, yeah, this has to happen. 
And then somehow or another, I got a hold of Courtney on Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, she responded. Like, okay, cool, this might happen. And so, I mean, like you guys, when you're playing LJT and the awards, when an artist responds to me when, when I'm trying to get an interview, I get super happy. Aww. You know, so. Nice. We get super the happy when people want to interview yes. us, so. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, too, yeah. like, trying to get you to tell her, to tell her, to tell her. Yeah, it, right. You know, I'm like, can we just give him Arwen's number and be like, you love her? <laughs> that was too simple. Well, well, it was just like, you know, I, I'm, I believe in God's timing. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, I talked to Courtney, and Courtney said, well, I'll get in touch with Arwen. And so then I let God's timing work. And, yeah. And if it's supposed to be, then it will. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I think I got back with you, and I was like, hey, what's going on with Arwen? And you were like, oh, let me text her. And then that's how it all happened. Let me harass her. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> and see, it's real hard to find that balance between pushy and persistence, too. You know, you were very, you did good. But well, that's you the reminders good. because right. I'm, sometimes I'm like a squirrel with ADD. You know? And I'll tell you another thing: if it wasn't for our one, I, I would have been here yesterday. So <laughs> I saw you put something about Tuesday, and I was like, uh huh. Yeah. And I no. and I texted Courtney. It's like, Courtney, are we on Tuesday or Wednesday? Mm -hmm. And not you, Courtney. No, that was completely me. Yeah, yeah. that was all me. Well, um, maybe I've got five kids, so I've. Got CRS. Oh, wow. So your family's not family. Yeah, we're a blended family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got three. She's got three. One has already left the nest for me. But, oh. yeah. So um, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, all that stuff. It's like it's, it's just day. another day, yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So. But I'm glad you messaged me because I would have been here yesterday, 100. Well, when I, when I saw <laughs> that, I was like, that's not right. Somebody's wrong. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, hold on, make, let me make sure I'm not wrong. Please don't let us be wrong. <laughs> so I, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys out there something I read about you guys that I think is really, really cool. Yeah, I think you guys did an interview for a Midland newspaper or uh -huh. something recently within yeah. the last couple of years, and um, one of you guys had mentioned that none of you really aspires to be a solo singer. You guys want to be in this together. Yeah. And there's no other aspirations there. So I really thought that was amazing because you're all equally individually talented, but you all also understand that collectively you're something just far beyond um, what you could be individually. So what's the mindset there? What, is there a strategy involved with all that as well? I mean, for, do we have a strategy? We strategize. <laughs> it's kind of like flying under teacher pants when it's on fire. That's our strategy. <laughs> no, you, you know, know, honestly, like I, the, our very first gig was a gig that I had booked by myself five years ago, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna go do this gig. Like, had no band, had backing tracks. Like, it was awful. I shouldn't have done it, but I did because I wanted. You know, I, that's, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna sing. I really miss it. And then we were singing together in, in my kitchen, and we were like, well, that wasn't terrible. Maybe we can, like, do something. So I was going to ask you, like, when it clicked, what was, like... In my kitchen. In her little kitchen, Texas. Like, in Texas. <laughs> and did the three of you just kind of look at each other and go, whoa. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. But it wasn't until after that first performance that I was like, okay, I don't really want to do this with anybody else. Like, I felt more comfortable on stage with them. I've I never, I've never had the shaky inside. I'm so nervous. I can't sit there uh, feeling... Right. With them, ever, right. ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Even just one of you, I'm like, oh god, thank you. My you're security right blanket, light. yes, you're my security yeah. blanket. Yeah, but that's cool. Just being on any <laughs> stage by yourself, with the inside start shaking like you're real cold. You can't make it stop, and then when you're singing, it's like, uh, it's, <laughs> ha! She did. <laughs> Mine is on silent, y'all. Mine was it on wasn't silent. me this time. But Don't you hate when the phone lies to you and says, yes. I'm on silent and it's not really? Check again. Check again. <laughs> I left mine out there. You're the smart one. She's the smart one. So you guys are in the kitchen and it's clicked. And so, I mean, how long was it oh. before you guys were like, okay, we have to come up with a name now? Okay. Uh, I know the I know the only reason I know the day that we picked the name is because I had to put it on paperwork or something for the LLC. And I was like, uh. So, like, that was at the end of what? What? May 20 something that we did that show and then or no May 18th duh because that was our release day so May 18th was our first like kind of show together and then uh, June 12th was the day that I had to file that I filed the paperwork for Calamity James so why that name the LLC um I don't know it's just kind of like it's very country sounding mm -hmm. and um I think it personifies us too when you yeah. think about who Calamity Jane is you know mm -hmm. Calamity Jane was a cowgirl but she lived in very much in a man's world, and she was very much just to screw you, we're going to do, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to live my life how I want to live it, and that's kind of how we that's are. Is, yeah, it's very much how And I can tell you, as somebody who's following Texas country, and I know you guys have discussed this in that other interview, but how hard
hard it is for females in the state of Texas to get noticed um, in this genre. I know it's changing a little bit now, thank goodness, but There's so I think you girls. need that attitude now yeah. to, to get noticed, right? Well, I, think, I think whether you're boy or girl, you need the attitude. I mean, look at guys like Aaron Watson. Aaron Watson did all of his own stuff by mm -hmm. himself, uh, you know, Cody Jinks, mm -hmm. and basically kind of said, to hell with your, with your cookie cutter mode, mm -hmm. to hell with what you think I need. This is what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. and it's going to work. And regardless of if you're male or female, you know, there's there's people that are going to follow the mold and be successful, mm -hmm. and there's people who are going to kick it to the side. And, and still be just as successful. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like those, I feel like... You don't necessarily have to play by the rules, even if there's rules there, yeah. you know, to you be around the rules. Yeah. There's, there's so much space within the genre of Texas country and red dirt right. for a lot of artists to exist and be popular and be well-loved that... You know, that's why we don't really feel the need to be competitive with anybody right. else or to... The only people we compete with are ourselves and yeah, what we did, and like, last time and performed. Yeah. And well, I think one thing you guys definitely have above a lot of other artists is identity. You guys are clearly who you are. You're not anybody else within the genre, which I think is incredible because you've carved out your own place there. Yeah. And you're smiling yeah. because it must have been meant, right? I, you know, when, when you set out to do something like what we're doing, you have to have your own identity. You have to. You can't be anybody else, and you have to have your own thing. And, and you have to know who you are along the way so you don't get lost. I call it dirty country. I, Ooh, I, I, like I dig it. I dig it. And it's true. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to be able you, and you have to be willing to get your your hands dirty mm -hmm. a little bit. And we've put in five years mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. just digging our trench. Right. Yeah. And now we're going to work it. And, you know, this getting that award was the most unexpected thing that could have happened. I, we were up against Prophets and Outlaws and Saints 11 and these people who... Jared Zock, too, right? Yeah. yeah. And then like, I'm like, what? I mean, who Jared Zock is a three-time number one Texas artist. Yeah. And, yeah. and we haven't even gotten, like, we have it at number 34 on the chart, and that's it. But, and, but in, everything else is charted. That, that don't matter. Like, yeah. the placement of all that. Like, I always say on this show, if you're top 100, you have a successful single. Yeah. Because there's hundreds of singles. Yeah. 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 And a lot of them are our friends, you know. Right. When we look on the thing, we see Billy Bagwell and Joe Walker and, and, Kenzie and, Kenzie, and yeah, and like uh, Will and Will we have Clark Green and mm -hmm. people that we love and you know hug every time we see them. Right. And so it's just, yeah, it's just. Crazy. Yeah, hopefully, we'll get all of those folks in the show soon. Oh, We've had some. Let me know if you want Kenzie. I got her phone. Number. Um, Kenzie, yeah, we're working on one right now. I've got her She's email so or something. Not, she actually. Uh, Announced our work. She did. She she did. Oh, very cool. Yeah. She, was like, I'm she so seems cool. really awesome, and we're probably going to do a phone or with her soon. Her. So cool. so yeah. But uh, William Clark Green's actually from East Texas too. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to get him on the show. Nice. He's, he's one of those. He's like he's JB. So busy. Yeah. 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 But he's on that level, like a, maybe a fan girl. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite Texas, Texas country songs is Tonight. I love that song. Oh, yeah. The, it's a very good song. The yeah. first time that Alyssa ever met William Clark Green, she turned around. We were in Steamboat, and she turned around to me. She goes, who is that? And I was like, <laughs> William Clark Hi. Green. And she just was like, okay, I don't know who that is. And I was like, you do. You know who yeah. that is. I don't, okay, my How quick did you go to your phone? I don't know names. <laughs> You know faces? I know faces, yeah. and, and don't ask me the name of the song. Right. But sing me the chorus, and I can sing all right. the harmonies. Like, I'll hear a song, and I won't know who it is. Yeah. Until somebody be like, that's who it is. Yeah, they're like, oh, okay. Oh. But I know every word to it. Right. Oh. Right. Hey, you're talking to a guy, like, 50 feet from here who butchered Charlie Robinson's name, so... Trust oh, me, no. I know about not knowing something. Like, I'm <laughs> standing on his bus, interviewing him, it had been an 11-hour day, I was tired. And I was just like... Charlie, man, thank you so much. This is Charlie Robeson, y'all. Is it Robeson or Robeson? And he was like, really? Oh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so, sorry, Charlie. This is uh, literally, literally. I just cringed a little for you. Like, I know. Well, the good news is, is that I, you know, I learned from that experience. So then when I was doing Bruce Robeson, I remembered how to say it. So yeah, yeah. Like, I, I got know. you. I got you. I was I like, I'm not going right. to piss both of the brothers off. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that was a really long day. So that's what I'm going with. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> stick to it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think he was just messing with me anyway. He was just like, really? Come he's on. he's a funny dude. Yeah, I love it. Well, his band was telling me after that apparently people butcher his name all the time. Yeah, but oh, yeah. it's usually a lot worse than what I said. Usually it's like Robinson or oh, Robinson God. or. We oh. get so we get a variation of our name oh, all the God. time. We've gotten my oh. neighbor. How has lived across the street hard. from me for years. 
came up to me and she goes, what's the name of your band? Chlamydia Jones. Uh-huh. And I just looked at her she and was like, Jazzy. Oh, man. Really? Chlamydia Jones. Yeah, <laughs> because we would it. name our band that. Yeah. But it's better when they just come up and say, you're in that Jane band. Yeah, no, Somebody, like, and Lana's just like, hey, the Janes. Yeah. You know? yeah. That works. We yeah. have people Jane names. <clears throat> yeah, we do. We Jane name people. Hey, y'all, this is Brie Bagwell. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. So you guys also, um, you have your own EP out, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So tell us about that. It's a, a debut EP. Yeah, it's a, it's a little five-songer that we put together. We uh, Four of the five are ours. Um, the fifth one belongs to Bo Phillips. He let us borrow it. We, we, we rearranged it. That's and the uh, riverbed. Uh, river yeah, yeah, riverbed's bows. And we, we, Texas Swing, y'all. Man, awesome we, whenever he, whenever we started kind of messing with it, I was like, well, how mad are you going to be if we butchered your song? And he was like, pretty mad. And I was like, well, tell me what you think. And he, he sent me a message back and he was like, oh my God. What was it originally? Originally, it was a little more laid back. It was not as swingy. It was yeah. very just swampy. It's like, a, yeah, it completely like that works. Like, yeah. Yeah. And with, whenever we kind of got into the studio with it and we just kept twisting it a little bit. And whenever I sent him the thing, he loved it. He's like, I like it better than my version, and I was like, what? Well, and what's yeah. funny is like when we when he goes and plays, he's like, hey, are y'all gonna come? Have y'all have y'all up y'all sing Riverbed with us? We get up there and he's playing it his way, and we're so used to it our way. I'm like, wait, what? How are you? What song is that? I know it's <laughs> weird to me to hear it yeah. the other way. I'm like, who? Huh? Do you guys feel like uh, like writing songs and getting them from brain to recording is harder because? Not only do you have to write lyrics and melodies and all that, but you also have to work through those harmonies as well. And a lot of artists don't do, don't even deal with the art, the, the harmonies anymore. See, so, I feel like the harmony is it, it kind of drives a lot of what we write. Well, yeah. that and like it just kind of comes natural. I feel like yeah, it's it's, so it's really natural for us. We were sitting down writing our the, the newest one that we wrote that I'm in love with because I feel like it's just us. Right? So like, <laughs> is that to be my baby? No, this was called Country as Hell. Okay. Don't even heard this. Yeah, no. Nah, we played it one time live. That's it. But um, uh, we're sitting there and like we're writing it, and as we're going through it and stopping and see this, this, that, and the other, I'm like, "Ooh, what do you think about this high harmony right here?" Gordon's like, "Yeah, I hear a low one." And so it kind of, it's in the middle of the writing process, the harmony placement. I'm like, "Do you want harmony here? Do you want harmony there? Where do you want harmony?" Blah blah. blah. So it kind of just. It's, I start hearing it in one spot. I bounce it off her, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I hear a lower one there. We'll do that there." And so it kind of depends on where harmony goes, right. where who's going to sing what goes. And it's not really hard to me. It's like magic to sit yeah. down and just put some words on yes. paper and have a generic melody in your head for something, and then go to somebody that plays and, and sit down and, and finish it out and have a rough chart, and then go to the studio and have it turn and be completely a different, you know, creature or really just. Kind of Do you feel like out. a lot of stuff changes a lot between kind it, of it the, does. the kitchen table it's and like then when you're on the yeah. board? Yeah, it does, but it all, you know, we have a hand in everything, so right. um, it always evolves to where we, exactly where we want it. And especially yeah. with this last single, I was so impressed with I, I think that exactly that's, what I wanted. I think that's why mm -hmm. I love working with Bart Rowe so much, because he lets us have that creativity in the studio to try things that mm -hmm. maybe he wouldn't think to try or... He wouldn't normally try and he's just like okay let's go with it and see you know at the beginning of pulling weeds the the clank of the of the rings and the sigh yeah. happened we had already finished recording we were getting ready to leave the studio and um bobby texas took off his pedal steel things the little finger picks mm -hmm. and set him down on his steel and everyone in the studio went oh, do that again and he was like what what and so we had to tell him again we did it like three times and finally got the clinkle clinkle that we wanted and we were like it's the rings Wow. Yeah. And then that the side thing, yeah. we all tried the side <laughs> thing. <laughs> you have like six different people in there going, and they're going, going one, two, three, <sighs> into a microphone. Yeah. He's like, no, that's not the right that's side. Uh, you go I know there, completely you go. how that is because like our, one of our audio people oh, that does our, our intros and outros and stuff, he'll just, uh, he'll say, say all this stuff, act funny. Just do it for like 20 minutes. And just I'm be, just pull, be funny. Yeah, just be funny and say this, say that, say this. And I'd be like, okay, this makes no sense to me. Like, we were all over the place. We're like a bunch of idiots out here. Yeah. Like, the last intro we recorded, we did it out on my deck. And there's, like, mosquitoes all around us. Oh, and it's, like, no. 98 degrees. And oh. then he turns it into this masterpiece intro that just, like, 
says everything about who we are as a yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, oh my god, we even have like a Donald Trump impersonation in there. And, oh, that's cool. And an old gangster saying, yeah, this is the best show ever. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, you guys really have to hear. I'll, I'll show you the intro after. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I know how that is, like where just the goofy stuff kind of makes the cut. It's just weird like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, just the story about the the little things hitting us deal. Well, and her mind is so. It's crazy because she's like, no, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, crazy in a good way. The way that she thinks about stuff in writing and her her writing process. It's so clever. Now that I've seen it actually happen, because pulling weeds and be my baby happened when I wasn't around. I had to go back to work, and they used to went down the river, drink a bunch of wine. She's heard all some songs. <laughs> I have two kids. I gotta make money for these children. They eat a lot. They're a little boys. How good five? You know. And they're all teenagers. Oh Jesus, bless your heart. I'm so Wow. They're all still alive. Get this man a drink. <laughs> he needs some way to skate. My youngest stepson is 12, and my oldest is, my daughter is going to be 21 in July. And they're all still breathing. It's, they haven't amazing. killed each other, and I have not killed them. That's I cannot keep a house plant alive. No, no, no. But you can keep kids alive. That's right. That's, That's how I am, too. Hey, whatever. It works. <laughs> but her writing brain, honestly, watching her go through this process, and like she, we have probably what five other songs that we still have to actually like Fine, get Jimmy. on paper mm-hmm. and chart out, and they'll be ready. But just watching her do this, I'm like, how did you think of that? Like, where is this? Guy? It's amazing to me because I, I got really up pissed here. off. And <laughs> I think it's awesome that each of you kind of has your own niche within this group. That yeah. you kind of have your own thing. Um, that's needed to get it from A to C. Yeah. You know, all of you are part of B, is, yeah, is yeah. what I mean. You yeah. know, and if one of you's missing, then there's something missing from the recipe. And honestly, like sometimes whenever she can't be there because she has, she she ended up having a baby a couple I years do. ago. I do. Two and a half year old. He's precious. Very spirited. <laughs> He's precious. I she love just, him. She's used to a little girl. Still, still alive, alive, right? Still alive. Still alive. Both of them. We're still alive. <laughs> Houseplants? <laughs> yeah, houseplants. No. But uh, when she was out on maternity leave from the group, we would be doing stuff, and I'd look at her and be like, I miss Courtney. Because the sound isn't the same. It's <laughs> not the same without the third. Right, it all has to be there. It has to be there to make it what it is. I know, right? right? So, I mean, there, that's one thing I'd like to talk about. I mean, each of you has your own family and your own kids and things like that. So, how? Not her. Apparently, Arwen doesn't. No. But like, how hard is it for, for you moms to kind of balance the family life and the real life from being on the road and trying to make the music thing happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we tell along. I mean, not our we, we have brought them along to stuff, and yeah. we always kind of have to measure, like, it's family friendly, then, yeah, we'll bring, we'll bring them out, and one or both, and then same with her, one or both, because mm-hmm. there's an age difference with hers and mine. And, yeah. Um, my hubby helps out a ton. Um, my he's on vacation for work. Yeah, mom, and we yeah. have a lady nannies that helps us, and so. Cousins, extended family. We have a we have an amazing family and support system yeah. that really helps us a yes. lot. But so it really allows you guys to kind of focus on the creative mm-hmm. aspect of things. And things. honestly, like our, our family, is, they're, they, they are our like number one supporters. I mean, we had our family reunion Sunday and cousins were like, I'm so proud of you! And I'm like, ah! You guys are like over here with the award. And like, <laughs> no. <laughs> but every year they're like, did you bring your guitar? you going to sing? And we're like, no. no. It's we're eating raw. Let us be off. Olivia Jones is not here today. Olivia Jones is still in Right? I just want to eat this morning casserole. Shut up, Aunt Nanny. (laughs) We love her, Aunt Nanny. I love my Aunt Nanny. She's my favorite person the whole entire year. That's not what she said off camera. Yes, don't tell me that. She she watches everything we do. Just kidding, Aunt Nanny. She went and got a Facebook account. Oh, just so she can watch and like the page. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. So, how does that make you feel? Like, just little stuff like that. Like, we can't quit this ever. Right. Even if we wanted to, we can't. No, it does, right? I know. Right? We have tattoos. We good? All right. <laughs> when, out. When, awesome. we, when we did our first EP, we went out because all these feathers. Yeah. Like, this is more orange, yellow, I'm red, Courtney's blue. So we went and got the three feathers that are on the EP front on our arms. Tattoos on our arms. Our so colors. Just blood in, blood out. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah. Quit. Now, nobody, now nobody can quit. <laughs> yeah, because I need to have to get a like a feather removed. All uh, right, <laughs> just cover that out. Right. Just an X. <laughs> I have a void stick.
stamp over my ex husband's name on my back. Oh, you I gotta do that to mine. There you That's go. Void stamp. Most people would have just like tried to put a flower or something over it, and she put a void stamp over That's it. That's smart. It worked out perfect because now it's, it's a, a conversation, conversation starter. starter. It really For is. Sure. And, and people look at it and they're just like, oh my god, that says That's void. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly it's like drunk people. They love it. All right, guys. So you guys are a lot of fun. We're actually going to play a game. Okay. Ooh, we love games. Uh, so we, we um, for those of you that have fallen along and watching, uh, we want to thank you all. But you know what's fixing to happen. We play a game on this show called Would You Rather. Oh, okay. Ooh. I love Would You Rather. And the way this works is uh, we, My kids do this. I, I used to actually pick ones out and make it, you know, less fun. So what I actually do is I just pick the first ten that come up. And you guys each have to pick one of the two. You can't say neither. You can't say both. You can't say what? Neither or both. You have to pick one yeah, of the two. One. You have to make a decision. And it's going to be the first ten that come up on the app. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So I have no idea what's fixing to happen. So are we going to go like one, two, three, like yes. that? Yes. We'll just okay. go from left to right. Okay. Oh, gosh. All right. So this is Would You Rather with the Calamity Janes. Here we go. Would you rather not have internet for a day or not have food and water for a day? Not have internet. Not have internet. internet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we agree. Look at that. Would okay. you rather have Monday off or have Friday off? Monday. Monday. Friday. Ooh, the redhead's different. Well, I have Mondays off. Would you rather work at McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. BK. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather work at McDonald's or Burger King? Mm-hmm. Burger King. I want to wear a cap. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, all it's all about wardrobe. Yeah. Last time I have it my way. All right, number four, would you rather be James Bond or Jason Bourne? James Bond. Jason what? Bond? It's like I don't even know you anymore. That's not a real person. James Bond? You said Jason, you said Jason Bond. Oh, I want to be both. <laughs> James Bond, I want to be bold. James Bond. Mm. Okay. I want to be Jason Bourne, I want to blow shit up. Like. <laughs> James, James Bond does, but he yes. does it from his wristwatch and has all the pretty ladies. That's true, that's true. And he's British. And he's British. Is it the Chris Brosnan that. one or the Sean Connery? Sean Connery. It, it didn't say that. Oh, well. Or the James Brown one. Okay, number five. Would you rather have Christmas twice a year or have your birthday twice a year? Birthday. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's so giving. We're so This birthday. is so awesome with drinking. We're selfish women. <laughs> I just like Christmas trees. Like, I, I like Christmas trees. I like Christmas trees. I like Christmas trees. I like Christmas trees. All right, number six. Would you rather kiss a jellyfish or step on a crab? Step on a crab. Step on a crab. <laughs> I'm, I'm stabbed. They agreed. Number seven. Would you rather go to work or no. stay home and bang on drums all day? I want to bang on the drum all day. Yep. I don't want to work. <laughs> I want to bang on the drum all day. You know what's funny is 99% of the time we're interviewing musicians on this show. And almost all the time, within the 10 questions, there'll be one about music somewhere. Nice. It's so cool. All right, number eight. Yeah, we'll go with that. Whatever. Would you rather lose your best friend or lose a member of your family? Lose a best friend. I mean, my my sisters are my best friends, and they're also my family. So, So, yeah, like, uh, Well, you have to pick one. Who do we have to lose? Who do we have to say? I I say another best friend outside the the family. I think that's that's not connected. Yeah. That. So, best friend. All right, number nine. <laughs> yeah, would you rather true. have? Oh, this is going to create like some comments. Uh-huh. All right, would you rather have a photographic memory or be able to totally forget anything you want? Photographic memory. I already do have a pretty good photographic memory. I'm going to go with forget anything you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forget a lot of things. So I'm going to go with <laughs> photographic memory too because I just may end See, I do have a photographic memory, it's just sometimes I'm out of film. <laughs> nice. yeah. we, need the yeah. we need a drummer. All right, yeah. number nine. Yeah. Would you rather live around a noisy neighbor or a nosy neighbor? Noisy. Mm-hmm. Noisy. Nosy. It's like a tonga. Oh. I, have, I have a noisy neighbor <laughs> in my apartment complex. Would it be really bad if they were noisy and nosy? It, Oh God. Oh, exactly. We would no longer be neighbors. We'd be waiting for the not. purge night, right? right. <laughs> oh, you're first. He went there. He went there. I was thinking of Wilson. How Wilson was always like, hey. yeah. "How do you Tim?" Oh, he was cute. Though. I, oh, lots of I have nosy neighbors. I'm, 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 I have a nosy five-year-old nosy. walked in my house yesterday. None of my kids were home. I was, Just home. I was like, "I'm gonna sit here and relax." 
oh, kids are gone. And then like the door, dee, 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 dee. Like, <laughs> I'm in my house. And I walk in the living room and there's like some curly headed five year old. Oh man, this when last one's tough. All right, last one, number 10. Would you rather be the first one killed in a group or the last person killed in a group? So either way, you're dead. Oh, but first. would you rather be the first or the last? First. first. I don't want to see anybody else no. go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. First. Oh. Yeah, I would have to agree with that, I think. Yeah. Those questions got sure. heavy. I know, right? That's what I love about it. Like, you just never know what's going to happen. No. I've never had a repeat ever, like, really? ever nice. come up. And we do this every single show. Um, yeah. And it's better than the old game we used to play, What the Heck, which was kind of like five um, really whacked out questions. <laughs> like one of the ones we used all the time was, um, if four out of five people suffer from diarrhea, does that mean the fifth person enjoys it? They might. They might. See, that was one of our What the Heck questions. We used it all the time, and people would be like, What the heck? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So that was uh, Would You Rather with the Calamity James. You guys are good sports. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. And um, again, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. Yeah, um, sure. You guys are going to do us another song, right? Yeah, it's, man. This, yeah. this is a Absolutely. new one? Tell us about this one. It hasn't been recorded yet. Okay. It's only been played live. It's We're going to record it sometime when we're not playing shows, I guess. This is one we wrote. Um, we got a little drunk on the river down in Bernie and wrote this tune. And then we did the Hemingway thing and, you know, edited Sober. And we're like, wow, that's nice. It's the nicest yeah. thing we've ever said about it. All right. Yeah. It's our, it's our one nice song. song. Yeah. We needed it. And then so. you have to recreate it without the 90 proof. Yeah. Well, we, without the chocolate <laughs> line. Yeah. Without yeah. the chocolate line. Ugh, yeah. Moderation. But anyway, this, <laughs> this one is called Be My Baby. All right, awesome. This is Be My Baby by the Calamity James.
All right, amazing song. Um, I really, again, it just shows off the harmonies, and it really kind of brings me back to the uh, the comparison that I brought up earlier with the "Go to Sleep, Little Baby" song. I was like, when I first heard you guys practicing that, I was like, okay, they already That's know about this that I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that. so are you, were you guys a fan of the movie? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, I love the movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, but I put it on sorry. and like. I, yeah. put, I put the movie on just as something brainless that I can do. It's, like, it's a, just in the background. How are you guys not performing that song live yet? I mean, it is so long and I can't remember all the so? words. I, I can't that's remember what all I'm the words. I think you would, shorten like, it. I think people would explode if they heard <laughs> that, shorten that coming from you. Shorten it on. Yeah, yeah, just make it your own. Take a few little verses out, that. shorten it. Down there you go. Yeah. Come on. There are a couple of backwards the guys the from, uh, Damn that peer pressure. I don't get into peer pressure. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. She has no kids yet. Uh, so remember true. that. That's true. That's because I'm the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so where can folks find your stuff on social media? I know you guys have a .com and all that stuff, too. Yeah. We and where can people um, purchase your music and stuff like that? We're on any any outlet for digital distribution that there can be. iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Spotify, Spotify all of that sort of stuff. And then... Uh, our website is thecalamityjanes.com, and then we're calamityjanes3 on... Uh, Not spelled out. The so the number three. three. The number three. three. Uh, on Facebook, and then everything else, Instagram, Twitter, all that, is TX Calamity Janes. Okay. And the dot com, I just want to be clear, it's the Calamity Janes. Yes. Uh, dot com, so make sure you get the the the, the in there. The the is the, 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 yes. the in there. The Calamity Janes. Make sure you go on there. They have all, um, you know, their merch is on there, their music, mm -hmm. uh, biography, all kinds of stuff. Their tour Our dates. Tour dates. Um, the, you know, the bipolar tour dates. Um, they're not that bipolar. They're yeah. rather. They're, not they're not bipolar. kind of close. Last year was more bipolar. Last year was insane. Yeah. Last year, I don't know what what the hell I was thinking. She I got, took. We us. went from Canada, like twenty miles from the Canadian border, down to Colorado, like in like fifteen hours. Wow. I was like, but we were in Janet, and Janet only goes like 55 miles an hour. And she enough. and she jumped Janet and our trailer that's still through the hazard <laughs> over a freaking ravine. I was ravine. in the back. It was yes. not a ravine. It was a pothole. And <laughs> it, it was, was over exaggerated. It was a ravine. It was large. I was driving. I saw it. No, it she, in the back. We well, where I come from, a ravine. I had the feeling. Kind of, so. kind of is. I mean, it, it was on top of an unimproved back road of a mountain. And literally every person, and there was, there was a point that there was, um, that there was uh, stuff so close to us, a cow so close that we could stick your hand, they could stick their hand out and, and like touch the cows. The cows and stuff like that. So we one cow that didn't get out of the road, it was just like, chilling. I'm like, out, what? Like, out, like, out, this is my road, fool. <laughs> and then, but. Whenever she did that, I mean, we were already like the van was already shaking so hard that we were like, this thing is gonna fall apart. It is going to be <laughs> like, And then we hit that thing, and every one of us said the F word. Every single one of us in the van. But did you die? <laughs> <laughs> no, there is. And we made it back home, and Janet is still in one piece. Got to the show on time, so it was, <laughs> she's so proud. It was <laughs> funny. I didn't kill anybody. All right, you guys, so again, I mean, we want to thank the Calamity Janes for taking time out of y'all's schedule to come on the show. Thank you for um, having us. I really appreciate y'all, you know, answering my messages and stuff like that. <laughs> it's always very cool when an artist does that, and so I, I thank y'all again. We appreciate this. And Lindale, you guys, Love and War in Lindale is the place to be here in East Texas for the, the best in, um, in Texas country by far. Um, I know you guys won't see this till far after they've already played, but y'all will be back, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, so. Yep. You guys make sure you come see these guys when they're in your neck of the woods, whether it's New York or Kentucky, wherever it is. Again, you can find them at thecalamityjanes.com and all over at pretty much every social media and YouTube. And you guys YouTube. missed your YouTube. They also have a YouTube, yes, um, which has all their, their singles and some cover mm -hmm. songs and, and yep. stuff like that as well. So you guys make sure you're checking that out. If you guys are watching our show for the first time, you can follow along with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at ETX Rocks. We're on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, all completely free. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate and review us. That will definitely help us out, get us a little bit higher on those podcast charts. Yeah. Um, as we always say on this show, we want to thank you guys out there for supporting live, local music. And don't ever forget, ETX Rocks! Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with... 
Austin Chris. Zaren Watson, ETX Rocks. ETX Rocks, Alapox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made in all of history. Hi, this is Paul Bebo and I ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're gonna love it. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. DP here. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. We're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. Jaden Farnsworth, ETX Rocks. Hey, everybody. I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. To the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi East Texas, this is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East, East Texas, Texas. we're Lady Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks. And remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX Rocks. Hello. Remember, ETX Rocks! Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy, ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texas, Canada down to the coast, and Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are ETX Rocks. <laughs> <laughs>